Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos published in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In the last episode of Know Your Mind segment, we attempted to understand the nature and functioning of the three levels of the human mind with the help of a few analogies. In this episode, we elaborate on the functional coordination of conscious, subconscious and unconscious levels of the human mind. Conscious, subconscious and unconscious levels of the human mind are active at different stages of the learning process whether you are acquiring knowledge or learning a skill. Let us take the example of acquiring the skill of riding a bicycle. At the initial stage of the learning process, the conscious mind is active as it takes intense conscious effort to take note of all the sub-skills such as maintaining balance, perilling, slowing down the bicycle by applying the brake, and the like needed to learn the art of riding the bicycle. This is because at this initial stage, these new skills and abilities are a little unrefined and you have to think about them in order to do them. You must know what must be done to ride a bicycle in order to begin riding the bicycle. At the intermediary stage of the learning process, that is the time between the initial stage and the stage of acquiring proficiency or expertise in riding the bicycle, the subconscious mind is more active. As the initial conscious knowledge the acquired skills and the accompanying physical actions relating to riding the bicycle are stored in the subconscious mind and are available for you to access once again when you next practice riding the bicycle. At the final stage, when you have acquired proficiency and expertise in riding the bicycle, all the knowledge you acquired, the skills you learned, and the motor actions related to the riding of the bicycle moves into the unconscious level of your mind. When this happens, you do not have to really think at all about riding the bicycle as your unconscious mind applies all your knowledge, acquired skills and motor actions related to riding the bicycle automatically and let you ride the bicycle without a hitch snag or hold up. At this stage, you are not only just able to ride the bicycle, but also you are capable of managing complex cycling maneuvers and tricks at higher speeds without having to do any mental activity. As a matter of fact, if your conscious mind attempts to take over your bicycle riding, in which your unconscious mind is already perfected. It can inhibit your abilities, make you take awkward moves and haphazard steps and fall from the bicycle. Thus, acquiring any learning or skill involves the same progression from conscious mind to subconscious mind and finally to the unconscious mind. This is also true of learning a new language. At the initial stage of learning a new language, the conscious mind is more active. At the intermediary stage, what you have learned about the new language at the conscious level is stored in the subconscious memory so that you can think about and access the translation of each word, phrase or sentence spoken in your mother tongue. However, at the subconscious level, you cannot have fully fluent conversation in this new language. When you become fluent in a new language, you do not have to think about and translate each word, phrase or sentence spoken into your mother tongue 
because you understand implicitly what is being said in the new language at the level of your unconscious mind. Hence, when you become proficient in any knowledge or skill you learn, your new knowledge or skill finds a home and lives in your unconscious mind. While in the conscious and the subconscious levels of the mind, the actual schooling of the knowledge or the skill takes place. Some skills you learn, particularly skills that involve motor actions, such as riding a bicycle, driving a car, playing a piano, and the like, stay with you for your entire life. However, other skills that do not involve motor actions, but involves conceptualization and understanding, such as learning a new language, a memorized written text, something learned by heart and the like can be lost or become unpracticable. For instance, if you stop speaking a new language you recently learned for a long period of time, you will lose your fluency in speaking it. You will not be able to grasp the full meaning of what is being said in that language. You will find it difficult to give basic responses in that language. You will make grammatical errors and forget some words and phrases entirely. This is because by not using the new language for a long period of time, your unconscious ability to simply conceptualize and understand what is being said in that new language is lost. And you just have only a fragmented residual knowledge of the new language. If this fragmented residual knowledge of the new language is given conscious attention and effort by further learning and repetition, your subconscious mind would facilitate the quick relearning of the language and help you acquire its greater fluency by moving the knowledge into your unconscious mind. Thus, whenever a new skill you have acquired becomes unusable or unpracticable, you must bring it back into your conscious awareness and use it more regularly again so as to make it more alive in your subconscious mind and facilitate it to move into your unconscious mind, thereby gain greater fluency in that new skill. Likewise, nothing is fixed about conscious, subconscious and unconscious levels of your mind. Subconscious mind and the unconscious mind are flexible and will comply with the wishes of your conscious mind. Hence, if you are determined to learn new skills, unlearn unwanted behaviors, and deal with anxiety, depression, or unconscious emotional states, your conscious mind can connect to both the subconscious mind and the unconscious mind and bring about the needed changes in your life by reprogramming your subconscious mind and the unconscious mind. Though your unconscious mind cannot be easily accessed and altered directly, like your subconscious mind, you can make use of your conscious mind and subconscious mind to learn new things and create new associations between sensory inputs and emotions with the help of therapy, various techniques and mental health professionals thereby teach your unconscious mind to act differently. However, the most important thing is your attitude. You need to be optimistic. Believe in yourself and know that with the help of your conscious mind and subconscious mind, assisted by right methods, and professionals, your unconscious mind can be positively influenced and genuinely transformed. In the next episode, we will begin our analysis of the human mind by speaking about the structure and the constitution of the human psyche or personality. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.